This is your father. Laura, go back. You must not cross over to this side. This is another world born of my own mind. Laura, go back. Come further and your world will be closed off from you. Laura, I'm...
D&D 2 can be a little tricky to follow, so as we go through these games, I thought I'd do a little recap every so often to get us up to speed on what just happened. So the first D begins simple enough. A well-respected doctor goes mad and shoots up his hospital. The entire LAPD find themselves unable to break through the lethal barricade that is one man and a handgun, so they set up shop outside. The doctor's daughter, Laura Harris, races to the hospital from college when she finds out what's going on, and is apparently able to sneak by the police and enter the hospital. This part is never actually explained, so we can either assume that Laura sneaks by the police, or the police thought it would be a good idea to send her in by herself. Either way, she gets by the police barricade and enters the hospital. And then once inside the hospital, Kenji Ino changes his mind and decides that he wants the game to take place inside of a mansion instead. Not just any mansion, mind you, a mansion that was created by the mind of the mad doctor himself. He wants Laura to get out, but unfortunately does not seem to notice that the front door is locked. I would assume Laura would be quite happy to oblige him if there was only a key. At this point, there hasn't been any indication as to why Rector Harris is able to create a house from his mind, or why the door is locked if he wants Laura to leave, but if we keep at this, we'll actually get some answers later on. So with no choice, Laura begins to explore the house, and she finds a scary bowl of soup, a scary mirror, a scary wall of spikes, and at this point, I'm wondering if her father is really Michael Reynolds. So far, Laura hasn't done too much else because, as you may have noticed, she walks very slowly. This is something that, fortunately, they fixed in the sequel. Now, as I mentioned before, Kenji Ino tried to introduce the concept of a digital actress with this game. He seemed to feel that as games were becoming more movie-like, that they would have their own virtual stars that could act across different games and franchises. This idea never went anywhere, so I suppose the game industry didn't feel it was necessary to attach such a concept to people that don't actually exist. I do think it could be an interesting concept, though, and a possible new revenue stream for companies to license out their established characters to star in other game franchises. I mean, if you think about that, that could lead to some interesting situations, right? It could be kind of, kind of interesting. Maybe.